I remember my brother as I was growing up. My brother kept telling me that I was a Martian. And then I became an actor, and he goes, I knew you were a Martian. <laughs> it's not wrong. And he used to say, you and your crazy yeah, friend. Make sure you have a nice parallel position with your feet, that your feet are either turned out or turned in. And in line with I have one very simple hips. question for you guys, and I don't want an answer yeah. yet. Yeah. I want you to think yeah. about it when we do our warm-up. Very lightly on the top of your spine. Those of you who are professional actors, and just begin to move Why? your head from side to side, very, very gently. And then just gradually allow the movement to become... Those of you who want to be professional actors, why? I'm not quite sure, but I've wanted to be an actor since I was about six or seven. Um, I saw some production, and um, then my, my parents, uh, they put me in this uh, children's drama uh, school kind of thing that I went to, and I just, you know, enjoyed it. Mm. Just take your right hand and just pull your head. And then I think that you have to uh, sort of find new reasons all the time because it's such hard work, and you you go for so many long periods without working, maybe. And so you know you have to keep reminding yourself of maybe in different ways. Why do you want to be an actor? Because. Um, makes me feel alive, makes me um, expand, and uh, I just love it. I really enjoy to entertain, actually. So maybe my purpose in life is to simply entertain. Bring the head back. Moving people, making people laugh, making people cry. Mm. Um, you know, I really enjoy making people feel a huge range of different emotions. Yeah. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> but I think the most truthful answer is just that I you know, I just enjoy it. I just love doing it. I love the, the play of it and the uh, sort of meaningful, serious play of it. I want to play, like, for the rest of my life. I am, like, shockingly thrilled. And we're all going, like, hmm, and the crew's looking at us like we're Martians, which is kind of cool because I do not call myself an acting teacher. Uh, acting teachers, as I perceive them, are people who have gone to acting school for years and never got a job and took what they knew as acting students and translated that into becoming acting teachers. I don't do that. I, I teach what I learned through years and years of experience in the profession of actually doing the gig. I took acting classes 30 years ago. I went to drama school and then have been working as a professional actor for 30 years. I don't teach what I learned in acting school. I teach what I learned through a lifetime of commitment to a profession. I want to make sure to reiterate, or to iterate, that I have had some great acting teachers, great acting teachers who never, ever had a job as actors, but are great acting teachers. I don't want to minimize them. I'm just saying that I am not necessarily that. I'm an acting mentor. Why do you want? To be an actor is the biggest question that there is. What is really a professional actor? What are we? We are interpreters, yeah. We interpret the playwrights, the screenwriters' words. We interpret the director's ideas. We have to manifest the set designer's concept. Look at the concept today. We're freewheeling. We have to manifest the director of photography's concept. We are the people, the front line of all this artistic intercommunication. What else are we? We are divine communicators. I talk about this stuff, it's really weird because I freakingly mean it. We are divine communicators. We are poets. What we do is stop time. That is our goal. It is our gift. It is our imperative. It is what we need to do is to stop time like poets do. They choose the fewest amount of words to tell the greatest amount of ideas. We need to use the 
most concise and specific moments in time stop them to tell everybody what it is to be human, to reflect people's lives back to themselves. That is our job. We are empaths, meaning that we are empathic. We feel empathy for other human beings and are therefore capable of reflecting them back to themselves, elevating their life condition. That's our gig. Our purpose in life is to change the world, nothing less. I'm dead serious. Oh, and I'm a comic actor. For those of you who didn't know, I've done more comedies than I've done anything else. You see that fisherman out there? Um, there's a fisherman out there, and there's something about the simplicity of his life that part of me would love to just be able to go somewhere, have a real job, sit down and raise a family, and make money and bring it home. Chances are that's not going to happen, because m my uh, desire to play is just too great. Acting 101. Who am I, right? What are my circumstances? What do I want? What do I do to get what I want? That's it, guys. That's it. End of story. End of show. That's it. That's the only technique that I use. That's it. I ask simple questions. And when I answer those questions, I'm actually in the middle of a performance. Who am I? What are my circumstances? What do I want? What do I do to get what I want? Then I believe we just practice it. We just do it over and over and over again. Who am I? Right? I said we were empaths. But before we can play anybody else, we have to first be able to play ourselves. You need to personalize everything you do. Everything comes home, especially in film and television, guys. Film and television, you better get personal, real personal. All the way home. All characters in film, television, and the theater are archetypes, all of them. The most of something, right? Why am I wearing black today? I'm the acting instructor today, guys. That's it. What acting instructor doesn't wear black? I'm doing it, OK? I'm doing it. I am a face with thoughts and ideas today. I'm your acting instructor. So I'm wearing black. The Buddhists say there are 100 lives in us at any given moment. It's our job to pick and choose which lives they are, which life we're going to use at this exact moment in time. Who am I at this exact moment in time? Who am I? What are my circumstances? What do I want? Who am I? My name is Dan Shore. I was born in 1961 in New York City. I'm an actor's mentor at the International Academy in Film and Television in Cebu, Philippines, on a hot day under a soundstage with you beautiful people. And within the month, I'm going to go back to New York to take care of my dying parents. I have a mother who just got out of the hospital and now is in rehab. She's 80 years old. She's down to about 75 pounds. She's going to die within three months. Am I the most freaked out person you know? Am I the most freaked out person in the world? I am the most freaked out person on Earth at this moment in time. That is who I am right now. I ran away from home uh, from LA five years ago and went off to the South Pacific and lived on a Pacific Atoll for four years. Went back and visited once a year, but I left LA, put my stuff in storage, rented my house out, and ran away. Who am I? I wrote down, it's very funny, I wrote down that I am Cleopatra. I am the queen of denial. I've been running away from this reality for a very long time. My parents are dying, and I have to go back to New York to watch them die or help them pass. Who am I? I am no longer in denial. I am the most freaked out person in the world. Who are you? That's our first exercise, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to come up here, tell me who you are. Oh, by the way, what I didn't tell you is that one of the things I told you in my story is not true. 
people talk about acting as lying. No, acting is not lying, it's telling the truth. But you need to have the freedom to tell the truth. On our, our workshop, for example, we are going to be on videotape and people are going to watch us. How much of us do I want strangers to know? How much am I going to reveal of myself to the world? I've given these students the opportunity to tell one big lie within their story so that the audience doesn't know which part is the truth and which part isn't. So what I want you to do is come out and tell me who you are. Who you really are. You can add a lie or not. Acting is telling the truth. It's not lying. It's a very interesting thing. You know the difference between a good actor and a bad actor is the one's telling the truth and one is lying. And you know who they are. Do you think I'm lying? Stretching, maybe. Hmm. But not lying. You need to tell something that is an actual possibility. I'm not going to tell you that I weigh 600 pounds because I don't. I'm not going to tell you I'm 61 years old because I don't look it. I guarantee that when I tell my story, there's going to be one big lie in there. You're not going to know which one it is. My name is Moa Silen. I was born and raised in Sweden, in Stockholm. I dreamt about uh, being an actor since I was a very small child, but I was uh, very, very afraid to do it, and uh, I didn't think that I was worth uh, taking people's attention. First of all, it became very serious because uh, Dan opened it up like, like um, he gave a lot of from, from himself, and uh, that inspired all of us to do the same thing. My name's Abraham Jacob Chowdhury. I'm from London. Um, I've been a professional actor for eight years. Acting isn't what I do, it is really who I am because I really love, I'm passionate, and I believe in myself, and I believe in art. And we are here, each of you are here because you ex love what you do. My name is Jazal Mpofu. I'm from South Africa. I'm 20 years old. Okay. <laughs> For me, honestly, I think the diversity, just meeting different people with different backgrounds, it's so beautiful. And it was also beautiful seeing all these uh, people just go up there and be as honest as uh, one can, could stand to be. My name is Lorenzo. I'm an engineer by profession and a businessman. So I came here basically because I wanted to forget somebody. So I went on a very, very strange path uh, to come to where I am right now. I think um, I got it the hard way. First, no one believed in me. And not only that, I didn't believe in myself. One day I was just walking down the mall thinking about what's left of me. Then suddenly there was this blonde lady who called me and said, hey, you want to be an actor? So I said, oh my god. I lost my honey, my money, and now somebody's gonna make fun of me. I've been through so much shit in life. I'm freaked out about life. I started to learn how to appreciate life. At least I could live out this miserable life of mine, live something else. I use those experiences, those emotions for my performances. All the knockbacks, happinesses, the loves, the everything. I wanna seek happiness uh, and uh, I just wanna get the most out of this uh, time that I've got, because I don't think there'll be a left after this one. If you really don't appreciate who you are and where you're from, I don't think anything can happen. This is the very specific time that I've got, and I just want to make the most of it. And be frightened and be sad and be joyful and fall in love and... 45 years old, most of you guys are much better off. I mean, age-wise or look-wise, but <laughs> I'm here. I love being me, I love Abra, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna be full of emotions just all of my life. <laughs> I think the way Dan opened it really brought it down to a, a, a level that, you know, people could just open up. And that was beautiful to see, and I, I think it was a great experience. <laughs> Hi, I'm Anna Gil. Uh, I know I didn't prepare in my head. Because the heat, I'm sort of like, I uh, don't know where my body starts, begins and ends. <laughs> uh, so I feel in Swedish it's called flummy. It's maybe abstract or dreamy. But at the same time, I have something really, uh, f for the last year, maybe. I had a long relationship that ended where I was really fighting for, a, <laughs> I, I think, a dream, an idea of something I really wanted. And when that broke, <laughs> I went at the same time into very, very um, 
hurt, disillusioned, sad emotions and really, really happiness at the same time. And feeling that span was, um, I don't know, I have like a, like a string that I'm so ready. I just feel ready for something all the time. Like, um, and and uh, oh, I don't even know what to, uh, to say, but um, there's some kind of readiness and a hunger and a, a drive in me, like I, I like have been woken up and I just want to. Uh, and I think it's difficult to find a, find it within me and also with other people to be fully who you are. Sometimes to be great and beautiful and and big, uh, and then the opposite as well. And to be able to be that. And for me to accept it and to feel that others can accept it. I've been, when I was working to apply to acting academy in Stockholm, I worked with a, a woman <laughs> uh, for several months, and she uh, she tried to help me um, let myself take space, <laughs> not you know diminish or uh, excuse myself for existing or for. And uh, I think I'm better at that now. Uh, Are you the hungriest person alive? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Mm. It's true. That's what I feel. Can you say that? <laughs> um, I'm the hungriest person alive. <laughs> Before you play any role, you need to ask very simple questions, which are, who am I? What are my circumstances? Where am I? What time is it? What happened just before? What do I want? What's in the way of me getting what I want? Then what do I do to get it? If you need to answer each and every one of those questions for every role you play, for every scene you're in. You could answer all those questions for every beat within a scene, but you need to start asking those questions in an overall um, way for the entire piece, then per scene. And once you start answering those questions, your work is going to become far more specific and beautiful. Uh, I'm Johan Forslund from Stockholm, and I'm 30 years old. And um, I think that I've identified myself as an actor since I was like six, because that's when I learned that I wanted to be an actor for some reason that I can't even remember. But my parents put me in this. Um, uh, drama school for, for kids. And everything was going so well from the beginning, you know, I was getting so much appreciation and attention and uh, I started working a little bit as a kid actor and uh, I went to a high school for the performing arts and right after that I got a job and I worked on TV for two years and I went to the States and studied there. And you know, everything was going so well all the time and I just loved being this person, being this actor, this guy who was gonna be an actor and that people believed in. And then I came back from that at about 23, and then all of a sudden, just nothing, you know? Johan and I have similar backgrounds, because I was a very successful young actor um, whose career would stop and go and stop and go and stop and go, but I tasted success at a very early age, at the beginning of my career. Nobody's calling me, nobody wants you know, me to do anything, so... And that was so hard, because that was all that I, that I was. I realized that I didn't really have any other uh, persona than that. So I was, um, I was very um, depressed about that for, for many years. I remember the last thing I was thinking about at night was that I, you know, I'm not gonna be an actor. And the first thing that I thought about waking up in the morning is that I'm not gonna be an actor. And that just, for some reason, meant everything for me. And I didn't even know why anymore. You know, if it was something that I actually wanted to do or just to, you know, prove something to people that had believed in me or mm. all the joy from it was gone. And I, w I was just miserable being an actor. And, um, you know, but I, I kept going because for some reason I just felt that I, that I couldn't give up because I didn't know what my life was going to be if I did give up. And so I started applying to the drama school that I'm in now. I still so much identify with being an actor, that when things are going well there, I'm happy, but when they're, when they're not, I'm just, 
You know, I'm, I'm 30 years old and I don't really know who I am. I'm just realizing. I used to be depressed and I used to be angry, but now I guess I'm just uh, confused. And uh, last year I, I watched my, my mother die at quite a young age, or she was about in her early 50s. And I started thinking that, it, you know, how many years do I have left? A lot of people in my family has died of cancer. And, you know, what do I have? Do I have 20 years or do I have 30 years? And what do I want to do with that time? Do I just want to spend that time trying so hard to be an actor that I don't, you know, learn how to really interact with people, you know, to actually make friends or, you know, lasting relationships that I've just never allowed myself to, to do because I've just been following this this dream. I mean, I love acting, don't get me wrong. I really, really love acting. But I also think that sometimes it's not, I identify too much with it in a sense that's not always so healthy, I think. This is the question that I'm always asking people. Thank you, man. He has whimsy for his past, but he is also extraordinarily hopeful for his future. He's got to be coming at it from a stronger point of view now. Has to. With greater possibility than he ever had before. Why do you want to be an actor? The most successful actors that I know are unemployed 60% of the time. Right? What is our purpose? I, my career went to shit in LA, went, to, went in the toilet, yeah, boom. And that's why I became a teacher and a director and a writer and a producer and got really busy doing other things because my acting career, my identity was so wrapped up in being a successful actor. No, it, we're not actors, we're divine communicators. And if we're divinely communicating without a job, we're still actors. We're artists, that's our gig, to be prepared for the next time you have a job. I love that he's the guy who doesn't know who he is. Once you declare that, you are now the guy who doesn't know who he is, and he's going to find himself. It's going to be like really fucking fast. And if we find that today, give me a million dollars. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't question one word you've said. I know for a fact that you are dealing with that question. The answer is this, my friend. Choose why you're an actor. The world is being divided right now, right? We have two factions right now. Well, there's many. But, you know, we, we're in the Christian Muslim wars today, being sold by Fox News and by Al Jazeera. We're being sold the Christian Muslim wars, and we're all at battle, right? We're being divided by the media. No, no, no. We're the media, dudes. We're the media. It's our responsibility to show the world that we are exactly the same. I'm the guy who's freaked out. He's the guy who's looking for himself. He's from Sweden. I'm from America. He's from England. She's from South Africa. She's from the Philippines. He's from Iran. She's from Portugal, England, Philippines. Cool, man. Do I know what he feels? You betcha. Do you know what I feel? Absolutely. Think about what our purpose is. And our purpose is 24 hours. I had an acting teacher once told me, actually, he wasn't an acting teacher, he was an actor. He told me, wait, Dan, 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 why are you beating yourself for not having a job? You are marinating. It's your job to marinate so that when the light is on, you're there, you're rich, you're thick, you're filled with juice, you're filled with flavor, man. All this stuff that happens to us is juice, it's marinade. It's marinated for us to be fascinating souls. Our job is to reflect other people who don't, can't reflect themselves. That's our job, right? Yeah. Cool. I would say that today was a great uh, reminder of the importance of, of being uh, personal and specific, and also about how, how fun acting can be when you set the right atmosphere and everyone's just ready and willing to, to work and be creative. If your purpose is noble, then you are continually noble of cause, no matter what happens, whether you're successful as people perceive it or successful as you perceive it. And that's far more important. Be successful to yourself. Create great works of art. Hopefully you'll get paid a whole lot of money to do them and you can support your family doing that. That would be a wonderful thing. The chances of that are very minimal. Note, me, I've been an actor for 30 years. Most of you will not know who I am. And yet I've had a career. 
We're at the Mactan Shrine here in uh, Lapu Lapu on the Mactan Island here off of Cebu. And the amazing thing about the Philippines is it's a primarily Catholic, no, it's a totally Catholic country, and yet they celebrate this great soldier, Lapu Lapu, who killed the bastards who brought them Catholicism. It's fantastic. Magellan first landed in Cebu, and then he tried to come over here and conquer Mactan and the Lapu Lapu tribe, who decided that they didn't want to be conquered. They killed him. And then they erect statues to him and to Lapu Lapu himself, the great tribe leader who ran these rabid Spanish dogs off of their island. And then kept their religion and their rice for fun. So this is the great Lapu Lapu. Looks like a cross between Hercules, Thor, and Manny Pacquiao, the great Philippine boxer. It's a gypsy lifestyle. Uh, you know, when I was young, people warned me. Okay, my father said, Dan, don't become an actor. It's a gypsy lifestyle. You'll never feel comfortable. You'll always be a little bit worried about your future and your present. And you are always worried about your future. <laughs> and you're worried about your present, and you're worried about your past, and you're worried about what you're going to do, but... It feels like an AA meeting or something. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people actually say that performance is a form of therapy. My name is Ina. <laughs> I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> I might have been. <laughs> um, who am I? So I was a little bit lacking energy and I wasn't nervous at all, which was kind of like a bad sign for me because you want that kind of, a little bit of a nervous energy. I'm in constant therapy, <laughs> I think, by myself and with actual therapists. <laughs> but then the closer we got to actually having to stand up and do something, it started, <laughs> getting, started creeping up on me. The journey of discovering any character you're playing runs directly parallel to your discovery of yourself. Before you can discover someone else, you need to know yourself and discover yourself. It's a continual pursuit. Is it a form of therapy? Uh, life is a form of therapy. I remember one time I was sitting in front of a hypnotherapist and she asked me what was wrong. And I walked into the room and I, I knew what I wanted to talk about. But when she asked me that, I sat there and I just burst into tears for I don't know why. And because there was so much. And where do you start? So right now, I feel like I'm in therapy. You're not. You're in performance. OK. Are you the craziest person who ever lived? Some people, you wouldn't think that to look at me. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I, I, I have been told that. <laughs> in a good way? Um, I think it's a good way. What about um, family? Um, I have a great family. And that's why I feel bad, I guess. Because I'm not so great. You a great mother? I try. You are. That's a non-question. I like to make things. Um, so all my life I've been creative. Um, but I don't think it's what people would have wanted me to be. I, I, I want to try something here. Like, what we need to do now is remember right now, we're on stage, okay? And your job right now at this moment in time is to take every feeling that you have and make it as a gift to these people. You think you're the craziest person in this room? <laughs> Don't be silly. <laughs> Open your eyes, drop your hands, and share yourself with these guys who are so grateful to see you here. It's a really cool, miraculous thing. You are a gift to them.
be on stage and own the fact that you're a crazy mother. <laughs> okay? But you're not. You are the most loving human being that I've met here. Okay? I don't care how much you hate yourself, you love me, and we barely know each other. Ina has chosen at this moment in her life to travel a path of self-discovery in order to pursue the possibility of her artistic career. They run parallel. Open your eyes and be proud of that. It's a gift. She's studying herself. She's studying her craft. It's the right thing for her to be doing at this moment in time. She's a mother who loves her child with all her heart. She oozes humanity. She oozes love. She oozes generosity. It's beautiful because it's not just for herself. It's for us to see ourselves through her. You don't want to hurt anybody. You want to help people. You want to love people. It's better. You're beautiful. So just stand there and be with that for about 30 seconds, and I'll take you off the spot. I wasn't acting, so <laughs> I can't really say if I was doing it the Dan Shore way. I just know that I was being completely truthful. And it was neat to, to see that. Scary to see that come out. Holy smoke. That took a lot to get out of, because you know, you're into the mindset, and you don't just all of a sudden snap out of it, because those are true things. Those are real emotions that you're trying, that you're letting out and trying to um, mold into a character. <sighs> I feel better now. <laughs> That's what happens after therapy. <laughs> For me, I can't just snap out of it. It took a while, and it is a little bit tiring, but having had the experience, I want to do more. But I don't think I loathe myself. I think I, I make things difficult for myself, but not because I hate myself, because I'm curious. Mm -hmm. So at the same time that I like to make, you know, cookies and stuff, like actual things with my hands, I also make things happen in my life so that I can watch myself go through it and get up and fall down. And my parents are sitting there watching me and going, like, you're, you're crazy. Why are you doing this to yourself, right? What are you more of than anybody in this room? And be proud of it. I, I make things hard for myself because I want to see. But I've had a great life, which is my answer to my mom. I said, yeah, I've had a great life. And I'm not ungrateful for the, for, for the bad things that have happened to me, because I've actually sought them out. OK. In order to do what? In order to Evolve. know, yes, and share, and be. OK. Beautiful. <laughs> um. mm. Sometimes I do equate acting and or performance to a religious experience. It can be. If there is a universal being, which there is, and of course in the Catholic religion it's, it's Jesus Christ, but in my belief, we are all of the same cloth, we are all of the same force in the universe, and when you build, walk into any church or into any theater, what you're doing is you're uniting human beings in the communal act of being human.
When you're ready, let's come back to this silent, quiet place. Feel the sound vibrating, and reverberating around the body. Feel the stomach vibrating, the arms vibrating, your little finger vibrating, your ears, your knees, your toes. And just very gently open your eyes and come back to the room. Just begin to just stretch your face out. Clench your jaw as tight as possible. And just release it. And move the eyes around. And just bring them back. And we're ready. Thank you. Okay. Who am I? What are my circumstances? What do I want? And what do I do to get what I want? We've begun with who am I? Like I said, our lives run parallel to any character that we're going to play. You know the magic what if? What if I were a dancer and I were the most selfish person in the world? <laughs> we are empaths, feel each other, use each other for food. It's fascinating. It's really cool. We just had a really cool opportunity. We've met some really deep, beautiful people. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a scene. Cold reading. Who am I? What are my circumstances? What do I want? And what do I do to get what I want? This is the rocket science of acting. The ABCs, the acting 101. Oh, we have cameras that are going to be covering you as you come up here on stage. And what I want to do is separate the mediocre from the exceptional. And the only difference between mediocre and exceptional is the level of specificity. And bringing it home and making it real personal. So, who am I? What are my circumstances? What do I want? What do I do to get what I want? So we're going to start with John and Johan. Oh, the scene is really simple on purpose, but it's not really simple. Come on up, guys. A, B. What I want you to do is to create a short improv that ends with a line, I may have to kill you. Our circumstances are these. A. Who's A? Me. A uh, went out and got drugs and did them before the other one had a chance to share them. What are your circumstances? Who are you? Let's make it up. Roommates? College roommates? Sure. Mm -hmm. What drugs did you go out and get? Um, I just had ecstasy. You just had ecstasy. There we begin. You're on ecstasy. He wanted some ecstasy. He didn't get the ecstasy. Johan, you're the guy who doesn't have the ecstasy. Yes. Okay, but where are you? In our room. Okay, beautiful. Okay, good. Have you been waiting for him? Yeah. Okay, cool. From the top. Hey. Hey. What's up? Okay, this is what one thing I really want to illustrate. So far, so good. But the most important illustration right now for this little moment in time is the first beat. The first moment of a scene. How happy are you? Where did you just come from? Um, I just came from a really good party. Okay, so you are ecstatic. And what is your first beat? What did you want? I've been sitting here for two hours waiting for the ecstasy. Absolutely. So you've been waiting. Are you patient? No. Oh, not at all. So let's pump that up. The first beat is you're coming in in order to share the love. Mm -hmm. For anybody who's ever done ecstasy, we sh <laughs> Now, I'm an empath. 
I've never done ecstasy, <laughs> but I've been hugged by someone who has. <laughs> it's quite lovely. They're sharing the love. So are we sharing the love? So let's make an entrance, share the love. The first beat is, I want to share the love. Mm -hmm. The first beat is, where's my shit? You ain't sharing nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Let's try it. Okay. <clears throat> Hey! Hey! <laughs> what's up? What's up? Why don't you tell me what's up? Kill you. I think I might have to kill you. <laughs> and cut. Beautiful. Well done. Thank right. you very much. Bueno, next scene. This is going well. This is beautiful. <laughs> Iran and Portugal. <laughs> They're broke. They're homeless. They're broke. And they're homeless. He was sent out for food. And he doesn't have any. Hey. Hey. What's up? What's up? Uh, you, you tell me what's up. <laughs> You're just like this. Huh? Yes. Okay. I tried. Okay. Beautiful. I'm getting it, I'm feeling it. First off, where are we? Let's say you're in America. Let's, no, you're in Cebu. Cebu. You guys came to Cebu, you jump ship from your class and you're staying here. That's why you're broke. Mm. You like it. Okay. It's a nice place to visit. Yeah. Okay, objectives. What do you want? We have who are we? We got the circumstances. What do you want? What do you want? Food. What do you want from her? Forgiveness. Entertain her, make her happy. Every time you enter a room, you have an objective. And that objective often is in relationship to that other person. You got forgiveness last time. Really easy. Mm. That's good. Make her forget it. Let's try that. Hey. Hey. What's up? I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Hungry for that? <laughs> no, where's the food? Here, it's all food. Stop being <laughs> stupid. I'm serious, where's the food? I love it when you're serious. Did you eat the food? Did I eat the food? No. Did you eat the food alone? Yes, I ate all the food alone. Yes. What's wrong with you? What are you fucking with me? Are you, what, what's wrong? F that's, that was what I was trying when I got in here. <laughs> <laughs> no, please, oh, don't even start with me. Where, the, where is the food? Are you alive? Are you breathing? Don't complain, I'll get the food. You'll get the food. I'll get the food. Go get the food. I'll get the food. Go Beautiful. get the food. Beautiful. I just want to take this to one other step. This is fascinating because the scene has changed completely. We now have a specific objective. We have conflict. What I've left out is who am I? What are my circumstances? What do I want? What's in the way of me getting what I want? That's what we have to inject level, the next level. What's in the way of her getting what she wants? Hunger. What's in the way of him getting what he wants? Hunger. There's a lot in the way. But what also was in the way for him was her head. We're in camera here. I'm watching you here this whole time and you're like this. Mm. Are you talking to me? I'm talking to him. Uh -huh. Find the camera. This is a very interesting thing. This is a little lesson that we have here today that which just popped up. 
The camera is a secret person you've always wanted to show your heart to. We're all alone in this universe and we're seeking to be seen. If you're here with her and that camera is there, it can't see you. Now it can see you. It's there. I'm not looking at it. I know it. It's part of the game. It's really part of this game. So let's do that one more time. I love the way the scene is playing out. Hey. Hey. What's up? Waiting for you. Waiting for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah, I'm so hungry. Oh. Not that hungry. I'm so hungry. Where's the food? The food? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get the food. You're gonna get the food? Yes. Where is it? It's, it's, it's in a... Oh. <laughs> Come on. Okay. You don't have the food. I'm sorry, but I'm as hungry as you are, okay? What are you saying to me? I don't understand. Where's the food? Do you have the food or don't you have the food? I don't have the food. No, you don't have the food. Calm oh, down. no, I don't calm down. I'm waiting here. I'm dying. I'm hungry. Is it, am I fun? Yeah, you are so funny. Okay. You know you are so funny. You go, go and get the food. Just like that. I've been away for three hours. I know. I know you've been away for three hours. I'm sitting here for three hours because I brought I'm food hungry to you. I'm hungry too. I'm hungry too. No, no, yes, you're not I'm... hungry because last time I brought you food. And now you're supposed to bring me food. So obviously you're not hungry, right? Okay, okay. Yeah. I'll go. I'll go for three, six, nine, twelve hours. And if I don't get any food, I won't come home, okay? Okay. So why did you come home? Okay, I'll go. I'll go. Thank you. Love. Oh, don't make yourself the no, victim. No, no, no. Maybe I'm not here waiting for you, you know? I'm maybe I'm not gonna wait for you. You're the victim. Yeah. No, you're the victim. I'll go away. Oh, you're gonna get, get the food. Go get your fucking food, I'll get my food. You know? And absolutely excellent. What I want to do now is, I'm digging this. So my only problem with this scene right now is the food. I yeah. know when I'm waiting for food, I'm waiting for pizza. I'm waiting for pig on a stick. Here in the <laughs> Philippines, we eat pork on a stick out here. I want to know what food you're waiting for. Okay. Is it rice? Is it eggs? Is it, you know, I want to, we want to know exactly what that food is. Fish and broccoli. Which kind of fish? Get specific. <laughs> now what I want to do is I want to do the next element, which is, I'm not going to do another scene. This will do, this will be it. I want to know the difference between stage acting and film acting. Oh yeah, of course. I forgot the camera completely. They what fight. is the difference between stage acting and film acting? When you're on stage, are you aware of the, the audience? Uh -uh. Are you? Yeah. Of course you are, yeah. but you aren't. You're not playing the audience, you're playing the other character, but you're opening yourself up. Mm -hmm. You're doing what you have to do so that audience sees you. You also have, if you have 30 people in the room, you're gonna behave like this. Mm -hmm. If you have 3,000 in the room, you're gonna behave like that because yeah. you have to, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The difference is simply size. If you're in a wide shot, you're communicating this distance between this and that camera. If you're in a close-up and he tells you you're in close-up now, not medium shot, mm -hmm. you're here. And when you're here, you know that that person is looking in your eyes. That magic person is looking in your eyes and you're allowed to take it to that size. They're asking you to take it to that size. You can't do that in a close-up. Mm -mm. You need to be hungry in a close-up. Mm. There. So what I want to do with the cameras is start the scene in wide shot, guys. Okay, you got it? And then when I call it out, I'm going to say, hold it. And then I want to go into medium. And I want you guys to behave thusly. Mm -hmm. And then I will call in close. So let's just start from the beginning and we'll do it in a wide shot. Beautiful. Let's start from the top. Hey. 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 I'm, I'm waiting for you. Yeah? Yeah. I know you're waiting for me. No, no, give it, give it to me now instead. I just... And let's slow it down right now. I want you now to go into medium, medium shots, everybody. Because we're, this scene is getting tighter. Can you feel? Feel the scene tighten itself up. The objectives are getting tighter. 
Okay, let's do it. From medium shot, know that it's from here to here, okay? Which means you're gonna move a lot less. And if you circle each other, it'll be in a much tighter circle. Continue, please. What's up? What's up? You tell me what's up. Oh, please. What's up? What's up? Oh. Ba baby, what's wrong? You don't have the fish. The fish. <laughs> I forgot the fish. You forgot the fish. Must you have fish? Do you think you're cute? I want you to think that I'm cute. Usually, I think you're cute. But now, I think you're a motherfucker. Okay? And, let's slow it down. I want you to go right into him, and now we are in close-up. Which means that it's right in here, and I want to feel you. Mm. Action. Sorry. I was silly. Just trying to... I don't care. I don't want to hear your bullshit. I want the fish. You understand me? Okay. You promised me to go get the food. I promised you to do whatever I could to get the food. That's exactly what I've done. Don't manipulate me. Don't start talking about all that shit. Don't try to be cute. Be frank with me because I'm waiting for you. Where is it? Where is the fish? I'm sorry. She's cheering for the fish. Ra, ra, sis pumba. Which one is Lapu Lapu? This one. This one? This? Lapu Lapu. Oh, this is Rupert and this is Lapu Lapu. This is the city. And this is the guy that rescued the city from itself. I want this specific mango. Yeah, it's from Cebu Mango. Mm. My circumstances are that I have run away from Hollywood. I ran away from my real life five years ago to a tropical island in order to rediscover what my purpose in life really is. I kept thinking my purpose in life was to be a successful artist, and it was and is. And, uh, while it was taking a path of decline, which is the natural course of any artist's career, I found myself in an insular hell, a, a little inferno, so to speak, and ran away. And I ran away to a tropical environment. And it wasn't here, I ran away to Saipan. And for some parallel, mysterious course of events, I end up in Cebu doing exactly what my purpose in life is, which is mentoring people from all over the world with the possibility of creating great works of art that unite humanity. I mean, Jesus, what is that? That's called extraordinary fortune. It's also called extraordinary sense of purpose. That's what I want. Those are my circumstances. And my dreams are being fulfilled as we speak. Imperfectly. <laughs> it's amazing how much noise there is in Asia. People ask me all the time, Dan, they ask me, how do you reach an emotional state? What about sense memory? What is sense memory? And I don't like to necessarily talk about sense memory. I talk about personalization and uh, taking my life as a parallel life to the life of the character that I'm playing. I talk about that all the time. But I realize that since I am an empath, I can feel the feelings of any living human. There are 100 worlds that live inside of me at any given moment. I can tap any one of them. I can be anybody. I can be the essence of any living human. Anybody. I need to be able to invoke any feeling at any given time. And how do I do that? That's a good question. There's a guy in the front, in the front row, very front row on the boat. And his arms are crossed, and he's leaning on the thing, and he's about to go home to Cebu. My name is Armando, and I've been working for three days since Mactan here with my mother, living in her house. 
putting the walls back up that fell down while I wasn't here. My sisters are useless. She does nothing. She does nothing. But I was here. I did my three days. My mother drives me crazy. My mother drives me absolutely crazy. But she needs me. And I did my job. I did my job. And now I have to go back to work in Cebu. I don't want to go back to work. I hope she'll be okay. My sisters are useless. They're useless. I'm going to have to work another six weeks straight, no days off, to make enough money to come back here, take three more days off, and help my mother again. Um, is any of that true? I don't know. Uh, potentially, conceptually. I was just looking at the man and his body and his body language and the strength of his being and the wistfulness of his demeanor. And what I then do is fill in the storyline and then put myself in those shoes and become that. It's no mystical, magical thing other than to feel empathetic towards what you're perceiving. Is there a strong part of me that physically helps my family? Yeah. Is there a wistful part of me that wishes I could do more? Yeah. Is there a part of me that just completely wishes the world were not exactly the way it was? Absolutely. And that's what I caught from this guy. I call this exercise talking myself into being. I, Tim, just got married. And I've been married now for about a year. My young bride, beautiful, exquisite. She loves me dearly. Loves me, dear. I have never had a woman love me like this. I have a new job at the bank. I've worked at the bank for 15 years. Finally, I made the third floor. Finally, I'm up to the third floor after years of toiling on the first floor, second floor. I'm now third tier. I am the vice president of the entire bank here in Cebu in the Philippines. I met my wife here and stayed. I thought I'd be faithful forever. I didn't know. I didn't know Fiona. Blonde, my dream. 20. Beautiful breasts. Shockingly beautiful breasts. The breasts that you dream of. Uh, uh, guys, you've been dreaming about breasts your entire life. I've been dreaming of breasts. I didn't know that when offered, I didn't know that I'd go. I didn't go with Fiona, it's a funny thing. Fiona is, um, for better words, she's a madam. She keeps stables of girls and she gave me two. It was great, it was amazing. It was amazing, two girls. What I didn't know was that Fiona was gonna tell my wife. What I didn't know was that Fiona was going to blackmail me. What I didn't know is that I was going to lose my life savings. What I didn't know is that I was going to lose my job. Three, two, one. It's that simple. That's the exercise. Did I talk about Dan? No, I talked about the circumstances of the film. Could I empathize with that character? Of course I could empathize with that character. I can empathize with anybody's character. I'm not gonna get cast as a 20 year old Iranian uh, soccer player. It's not gonna happen anymore. You know what I mean? But for anything that I could possibly play, chances are I can certainly empathize with it. And if I can't empathize it, that's why God created research. If I don't know what ecstasy is, I can certainly find out. If I don't know what it's like to be with two hookers, that's why God created video. Be empathetic, and if you don't know it, find it out, research it. You don't have to take the drugs, but you know someone who has, right? You don't even have to go on the internet. You know somebody who has. Talk to them. I've never been in war, but I've been in three war films. I know what it's like to be in war. I've hung out with enough soldiers. I can empathize with them. I can play them, right? 
So what I want to do is the exercise called talking myself into being. Very simple. My name is Len. Um, I have a seven-year-old son. He's studying behind me. Um, I got a call today from school, his school. He beat someone up because, um, well, he's seven and he's got all this emotional baggage already at seven. His dad um, basically abandoned us, I guess, right after he was born. And so now I've got this beautiful boy and um, sometimes it's not so beautiful raising him because I'm just me and I'm missing the other person who's supposed to be there caring for him. Mark. Mark. Baby. Why don't you tell me what happened at school today? I need help. I, I, I need help. I don't want to ask his dad, but at the same time his dad calls and says that he's going to come and help, which is great, but I haven't seen him in seven years. I don't know if I, I don't even know if I'd like him anymore. Uh, I'm totally confused about how to accept him into my life or if I should accept him at all. Why am I even making food for this man? Why would I prepare breakfast for somebody who abandoned me seven years ago and hasn't come back? Does that make any sense? And in a couple minutes, he's gonna be here. I don't think I want him to come. But God, I need help. for you for such a long time. I know, and I'm going to make it up to him. <sighs> and I have requested a transfer to Clark. I'm going to be here to help our son become a man. <sighs> mm. I will. really am a single mom and I really did sort of go through something similar like that so for me to be able to start from standing in front of a group of people and not really being myself and having to talk about my own circumstance it actually does surprisingly build up really quickly into the character because the character gives you boundaries that are obviously different from your personal life so when you're expressing that thing about your personal life then it kind of spurts out and it takes the form of the character that you're playing. Mm -hmm. And when you're when you keep talking like that, it, it just comes out naturally. It's a, a progression. My name is Lisa. I'm 28 years old. Um, I've been seeing this man for five years. Um, he keeps on cheating on me. And I think I'm really losing my mind. It's hurting me every day. He knows that I'm weak, but he keeps on doing it over and over again. At this point, I don't know if it's really love or I'm just going crazy. I'm not thinking straight, I'm not... This is not Lisa, this is someone else and I'm not sure who it is. I'm so sick and tired of his lies. I'm so sick and tired of him telling me that he loves me when he doesn't love me. And it's hurting me every day. 
it's really hurting me and I'm gonna do something that is really not me. But I want him to suffer. I want him to feel the pain that I'm feeling right now. I want him to remember me. I want him to feel the pain that I'm feeling right now at this point, at this moment. I can't believe I'm about to do this. I never thought I'd ever see this day. I'm in my back of a second position. I don't even know if I'm strong enough. You out of all people should know I'm the weakest out of us two. I hope you understand. It was a bit difficult, honestly, because I had to be all emotional and, you know, but then when you relate to the character so deeply that you can actually feel what the character is feeling, I think it's much easier and be honest with yourself. Guys, my name's uh, Max. Um, I'm 28 years old. Uh, I'm an artist and um, I just get abused by my dad. My parents left me. I was adopted. Um, yeah, so that's my basic background. Um, I went to this coffee shop. Um, I go to this French coffee shop quite regularly. And um, there's this beautiful um, waitress. Uh, every time I go there, I'm always ordering one coffee. And um, she looked like she was carrying the weight of the whole world on her delicate shoulders. I wanted to pick her up, hold her next to me, squeeze her so hard that she will forget about all her pains. So I ask her out, and um, we go for a f few dates. Um, it all goes well. And um, she invited me back to her house, and um, invited me back for a coffee. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> um before that, I, I just admired her beauty, her beautiful physique. Um, I just stood a distance while she was in the bathroom. She had this beautiful silk dress. All I wanted to do was hug her so tightly and just feel her. I wanted to make her, I just wanted to feel her sweat, cuddle. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to making love to her. I want her to feel, I want to feel her beauty. I want to feel it every inch of her body. It was her eyes, her hands, her soul. That wasn't always mine. But she is now. Water. You met her here? At work. She was a waitress at a cafe shop. How long ago was this? About a year. Oh my God. Time's really flown by. I still remember the first time I saw her. And? Okay. <laughs> I end up killing this girl. I'm like, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Acting is something that anybody can do. It's not this, this crazy um, kind of mystifying art that very few people know little about. You could basically do it in in three steps by answering the three questions that Dan poses. If you answer those questions, then I think you're on your way to discovering whether or not you're suited to acting or if you even want to pursue it anymore. 
how good you are depends on how much you're willing to give to the process. It's fun. It's fun to always be searching and adding more meaning to, to your life that way. Not just as an actor playing a role, but as a person, you know, looking at the world. I think mainly one of the things that I, I was struck by is something that is uh, humanity. So many different people here today different backgrounds we've never met before, to just throw yourself in there no matter cameras on or off. Regardless of our backgrounds and uh, different pers personalities, we all want pretty much the same. We want to play the same games, and that's fantastic. All, all these stories, when people just went up and, and spoke of their lives, just I, I got the goosebumps, <laughs> yeah, mm. all the time. It's just, uh, every story is so, so different and so, and to have, in a very short period of time, something sparkle like that, where people just tell something personal, and, uh, and that is inspirational for this work, for what acting is. So my name is Jennifer, <laughs> and I'm in a coffee house, and I'm watching that boy. And that boy has been taking advantage of a very lovely girl I know the story, I've seen him, my eyes are on him, I'm watching you. And I'm seeing what happens to you, and then I am thinking this might be my lucky night. And so what I notice is that he's been playing a little trick on her, and she turned the trick on him and put the drugs into his drink. And so he is now going to go to sleep for me. It's my luckiest day. Okay, we did a piece together. That's going to be the little comic piece that we have. Um, <laughs> I play this very uh, <clears throat> unattractive, queenly woman who ends up with sweet Abraham. Um, this, ladies and gentlemen, is everything I know about acting. So I leave you with uh, one very, very, very simple question. And uh, I think you know what it is. Why do you want to be an actor? And my name is Ersando. And there is a film crew here, and I'm here in my police officer suit. And I'm a professional guard here. Now, I've only been a guard for about three weeks, but I know if anybody ever sees this on film, I'm going to look good because I've seen all the cop shows, I've seen all the cop movies. I know what it is. I can't lose my job either. I have got to stay professional no matter what anyone thinks. Rosando. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been working here? One year. One year? Yeah. Are there criminals here ever? Yeah, yeah. Not really. 